Hey everyone, this is Jay Clark over here at uh, CES 2018. Uh, we are at a booth that has a very, very interesting 3D printer that uh, we have not seen before. So uh, I'm going to have you introduce yourself and then tell me uh, the company that you are with here. Right, so I'm with Ethereal Machines. Um, we are a startup based out of India. Our roots go back to CNC. That's what we started off with. We started off with CNC subtractive three axis manufacturing. Um, since the last year and a half, we've been developing five axis technology. Um, so once we perfected the five axis technology, we delved into 3D printing and that's what the Halo has led to. It's a hybrid manufacturing machine capable of both subtractive manufacturing and additive manufacturing. And here's the cooler part about it. Both subtractive and additive manufacturing on the Halo are on five axis. So say something like this, if it were to be made on a regular 3D printer, it would have to be built with support structures for this particular fin to be made. Whereas in my machine, once the cylinder is built, the entire bed swivels so that you can then start printing this particular fin and post that it rotates so that you can build the next fin. So think about the amount of uh, things that you could create without support structures. Think about how um, the kind of, if you want to do some kind of finishing, uh, some kind of uh, machining work to be done on your printed part, uh, then this is the machine that you're looking for. Sweet. So what what sort of build volume can you have with this? Um, you know, with like, like in its sense right now with its with like its X Y how it's set up. What's the build volume that I can do so, right here? Uh, what you're looking at right now in this particular machine is a 150 mm circular disc. That's the uh, volume that you're looking at. 150 mm and 150 mm in Z as well. That's what you're looking at. Perfect. And and are we just running PLA today? Uh, yes, so we're trying PLA um, right now, but the machine is capable of materials up to nylon. The nozzle goes up to 350 degrees Celsius, so that gives you a plethora of material, PLA, ABS, all the way up to nylon. Okay, and then um, uh, what build platform are we actually utilizing? Like, what's the what's the surface that it that it's on? Because it looks it doesn't look like build tech, but is it? No, it isn't. It definitely isn't. It's completely made by us in house. It isn't build tech. Not okay, so. Um, tell me a little bit, I, I'm assuming that there's no like software or firmware that, uh, that, that is specifically designed for this. So can you um, describe a little bit of what you're doing in that realm? Sure. So uh, let's break this down into three components. Uh, one is the five axis subtractor, uh, which is uh, available. We have, post process for, we have a post processor for it, so that's taken care of. Uh, your regular 3D printing, that's taken care of by any of the uh, softwares that, that are available and there are tons of them that you could use. Uh, the difficult part comes in when, when it's the 5D printing part, right? So on that we've achieved uh, a good amount of success on developing the software, but it's right now extremely uh, uh, um, complex and has layers to it and we are now in the process of simplifying it for everybody and developing it to a much uh, uh, user-friendly manner so that's where what that's what we are looking at right now so we are almost done with it around 70 to 80 percent a uh, few more months and we should be done with that awesome and and it's all all of your software is like in-house developed right then yes, more or less more or less everything right from the design uh, the building of the machine uh, each and every component that goes into it because uh, our roots, as I said, go back to CNC, so anything that needs to be machined or anything related to precision, we take care of everything in us from start to end. Perfect. And then, um, what is your plan to bring this to the U.S. market? Because I'm assuming this is your first show here in the yeah. U.S.? This is the first time we are at uh, CES, this is the first time we are in uh, the United States. A lot of people are looking at this right now in its present state itself for hybrid manufacturing purposes. They want to start milling out materials such as wood, nylon, wax, uh, thermocol for the jewelry industry, for a little bit for the automobile industry. Uh, some people are looking at this uh, to also integrate uh, printing on a milled part uh, or some people are looking at printing out something and then milling out something as well so in its present form there are a lot of people who've been inquiring us on how to go about it and it's and it's good to go for those kind of applications we have we've started talking to a couple of resellers and distributors um, on how to go about this um, so that should be done soon because that's that's the reason we're here at CS we're looking at people who we can collaborate for resellers and a distributor network 
Awesome. And so is there a plan to ever do a like um, like a swappable head so all of a sudden you could go from like 3D printing to machining and then back to 3D printing? Right. So right now what it is, it is a swappable head just that you need to remove those four screws, the print, uh, the print head comes out and then you attach on the spindle. Uh, as easy as it can get right now. If somebody wants it automated, then you know how the prices shoot up. <laughs> so, uh, but we are we're definitely working towards that. But as of now, you know, you just remove the print head, put in your spindle, and you're good to go. Perfect. Um, and so, you know, when you're switching, um, you know, from one axis to the other, have you guys, what have you seen with like the layer adhesion with the materials for, you know, let's say one of those little offshoots? Do you have really good layer adhesion? Yes. So, you know, uh, you should be able to see it uh, in, a, in a while from now because right now uh, it's going to it's gonna swivel over when it's at 60 mm height yeah. and we are not interfering in between at all. The fins come about just as you can see it right now. We haven't added anything. Uh, there's nothing specific we've done. There's no chemicals, there's no addition, nothing. The layer addition is perfect. So you, you'll be able to see that in a while. Perfect. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any other questions and it looks yeah, like you this guys... this is another example okay. we look at uh, when I'm talking about hybrid manufacturing. Yeah. Because what we've done over here is we've cut out a dome out of wood. And once we cut out the dome, we printed uh, a layer of uh, black filament on top of it. And then we printed out our logo as well. Something like this on a regular 3D printer is extremely difficult. And because of my five axis movement, it's very easy for me. And not just that, right? Look at the brim that has been printed over here. That is impossible to achieve on a, on a regular printer. But my machine moves the stock like this and the nozzle starts depositing the filament and then it rotates. So something like this is possible only because of this particular machine over here. Well, and then you can also add different strength components because when you think about traditional FDM, you know, you only, you know, you don't have great layer, layer adhesion for that strength aspect. So now you could probably go back over exactly. it and then create another uh, yes, portion. you can create a mesh, you can create your uh, interlocking, uh, interlayer locking and things like that to increase the strength, definitely. Well, I think this is an awesome technology. I think this is something that uh, we're going to watch closely as it starts to come into the into the market, and then really see how people are starting to utilize this specific part. Because that's really where I could see it happen. Is like all of a sudden you're using you know black material, then all of a sudden you go to you know like traditional PLA, right. and all of a sudden you go to like a glass filled, and then all of a sudden you can maybe go to a nylon. All of a sudden exactly. you can and uh, start switching that up. So, um, well, thank you for your time. Is there anything else that you want to add um, about? Um, um, we hope that we can, you know, fulfill all the expectations of the market and. Uh, people who are watching out for us uh, um, let us know uh, whatever your inputs are and we'd be very happy to incorporate them yeah definitely and, and yeah and actually one more question do you know a price range for this yet or are you still working on so, that uh, no uh, we're we are looking at uh, selling this at a price range of roughly around uh, twenty thousand uh, dollars for this particular machine uh, that's what we're looking at right now in fact we've we're just closing a couple of those deals as well Awesome. Well, that's great to hear. And like I said, we're excited to see this and uh, um, I'm hoping that we will see more of these out in the wild and seeing how they're actually being utilized. So I appreciate your time today and have a good rest of CES. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you guys. Thanks.